With Valentine's Day just around the corner, you might be thinking about romance, flowers, chocolates, or maybe it's money that's on your mind. A new survey says Canadian couples aren't being totally honest about their finances. Scott Peterson is here with those details. So maybe some people should just be buying a card or maybe making a homemade card. What did know, this... Or... Or a lie detector test, maybe, <laughs> oh, or just, no. you know. Now you're going to the dark side. <laughs> well, it's, uh, somebody has to. But they're calling this financial infidelity for a reason. And it seems that we all feel a need to maybe not quite tell the truth to our significant others, our spouses, our romantic partners. And, and the number of us that are doing this is surprising in this new survey this morning. Take a look at this, Asha, as far as the amount of Canadians that are not telling the truth about their finances to their partners. 36% of us uh, have... Uh, lied to our romantic partner about our financial matters. And this could be something about how much we have in the bank, how much we pay for car payments, something minor about how much we spent over the weekend or at the Super Bowl for that matter. Also, this is an addition, and this is a little bit more um, alarming or a little bit more troubling. 34% of Canadians have kept financial secrets. This is a more long-term thing. If you have a gambling issue, for example, what's our net worth, how much we own of our homes, how much we make in a year, all this could be into that. That's over a third of us and this is according to a survey by Credit Canada of about 1,500 Canadians across the country uh, and it's not gender specific either it's men lie the same amount as women do it also goes on to say that couples are more likely to talk about our past partners than we are about our financial situation so it seems, it seems there's a little bit of taboo there in discussing our finances maybe a little bit of pride that we're reluctant to uh, to uh, you know to uh, agree on and also it's called financial infidelity it's the first time I've heard that term anyways so it seems a lot of us are not telling the truth Asha Ooh, so stop spending start talking what advice is the survey offering to couples struggling with financial infidelity. Actually, just what you said, start talking. I think the lack of communication is the big one here, but there's a couple of different suggestions here. One is if you're new to a relationship, discuss what maybe your financial goals are going forward. Start with that. Two, if you're in an existing relationship already, maybe you could get a, a counselor, not that kind of counselor, but a financial counselor as far as you know, putting everything on a table and discussing it because there's two major parts of relationship arguments and that is one with not communicating enough and second quite often is arguing about money asha so this sort of nails that uh, issue home this morning yeah that's one of the top reasons for divorce so some sound advice for yes. couples <laughs>